Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. It is Tuesday, June 10th, 2014, and I'm Leanne McAdoo. Here's what's coming up tonight. Tonight. Where does the responsibility lie with the Alex Joneses of the world? The zealotry of the far, far right fringe, and Alex Jones is unbowed. That's yes. right, witch. I don't believe known certified liars that say the Klan founded the NRA when it's the opposite. I've heard that come out of your fat mouth. This show is scary because we're a mirror for MSNBC and Media Matters and the White House to look at who you are. Well, we knew that the Vegas cop killers would be exploited to go ahead and jumpstart the right-wing extremist meme. Well, right on time, CNN has now said that the liberty movement is more of a threat than Al-Qaeda. Now, this is coming from Peter Bergen. He's CNN's national security analyst. He writes that the attack in Vegas is far from the only incident of violence by the American far right. According to data collected by the New America Foundation, Right-wing extremists have killed 37 people in 16 violent incidents in the U.S. since 9-11. Now that number is more than the 21 people killed by militants motivated by al-Qaeda's ideology in the post-9-11 era. Now CNN is basically in no in uncertain terms insisting that right-wing extremism is a threat more lethal than al-Qaeda. Now pointing out that the New American Foundation is a think tank that's lorded over by Eric Schmidt of Google. It's funded by George Soros and the State Department. But basically what's actually happening here is a concentrated effort to demonize criminal opponents. Now we reported, you know, the standoff with Clive and Bundy, that that was a small victory. They didn't, uh, definitely did not win the war. And of course the establishment is never going to allow that to go unchallenged because that might prompt more people to feel like they can stand up to the government. And of course, now the establishment is gonna have to redouble its efforts to neutralize its political enemies. So that's of course what is happening here. They're using this situation with a deranged cop killer, cop killers, to you know demonize the entire patriot movement and liberty movement. Um, but others are now pointing to the fact that this guy, Jared Miller, was conveniently interviewed by NBC and, and Al Jazeera while he was at the Bundy Ranch. Now, all of this was prior to this weekend shooting, of course, and um, you know they're saying that maybe this is proof of, a, of some sort of staged event or that he was an agent provocateur. Um, here's how that interview ran then. I feel sorry for any federal agents that want to come in here and try to push us around or anything like that. I, I really don't want violence toward them, but if they're going to come bring violence to us, well, if that's the language they want to speak, we'll learn it. Now, I remember seeing that clip when it aired, and I thought, of course, the mainstream media would use that particular part of the interview. It's very menacing, and it fits the agenda that these people out there are dangerous and unhinged. But that's exactly what I thought. This guy does not represent the Bundy supporters. He doesn't represent the whole uh, movement that was there. And he seemed a little unhinged or like an agent provocateur. And indeed, you know, that made me cringe. You didn't hear anyone out there at Bundy Ranch uh, saying those same type of things. And he was actually, him and his girlfriend were kicked off of Bundy's ranch for having those kind of views. Now the Daily Mail reports on Miller and his girlfriend's ouster from the ranch saying, uh, they were quoting Ammon Bundy who said, many of the Bundy supporters asked for Miller and his girlfriend to be ejected for being very radical and that they did not align themselves with the other protests. And Ammon said that not very many people were asked to leave. I think they may have been the only ones. So of course that's, you know, agent provocateur type behavior is what we hear that they, you know, they were very radical, didn't align themselves with the actual protests that were going on. And that's the same sense that I got from the NBC interview. But it's interesting how the Daily Mail calls them out and says that they're white supremacists, which of course is not how the left leaning liberal media here is only referring to them as these right wing extremists. Um, it's a, a different spin. But you know, what we're hearing, the guy clearly was making a lot of Facebook posts and his, uh, the girlfriend's family seems to think that she was somehow brainwashed by him believing these things. Um, and his Facebook posts sort of point to this sort of unhinged rambling and you could tell that he really was wanting to start something. And it's interesting how the Daily Mail calls them white supremacists and not using the right-wing extremist meme that we are having here in the West. 
Um, but clearly, you know, the guy was unstable. He has, appears to have brainwashed his wife, and he had some rambling posts on Facebook, and that's exactly what the establishment needed to demonize the Patriot movement. So, you know what? Who knows? Maybe they did have their eye on this guy. I'm sure he was on an FBI watch list for quite some time based on his Facebook posts that he's been making for years. So, who knows? I mean, they could have very well used him as an agent provocateur. Um, maybe that's why they interviewed him on NBC to sort of have all of this. I mean, he was definitely on their radar. So, I'm not saying it was a false flag or staged event or anything, but Frankly, if they're going to stage one, why not stage them all? Now, not only does this cop killer and his cop killer girlfriend justify their agenda to grab the guns, but they also justify the recommencement of the Justice Department um, bringing back their task force on domestic terrorism. Now, this is a task force that will be focused on anti-government plots and racial violence, which what are they saying about Jared Miller? That he's anti-government and a white supremacist. So, bingo. Now, but it also justifies the need to militarize local police nationwide. Now, an article in the New York Times this week points out that police departments have received tens of thousands of machine guns, nearly 200,000 ammunition magazines, thousands of pieces of camouflage and night vision equipment, hundreds of silencers, armored cars, and aircraft. Well, why? Well, a small town Indiana sheriff breaks it down and defends this large-scale transference of military equipment, saying, the U.S. has become a war zone. Now, this particular county that the sheriff oversees, Pulaski County, is a farming community with just over 13,000 residents. In 2012, the county experienced only 11 incidents of theft, just 17 property crimes, and there was one murder. However, it is unlikely that a mine-resistant vehicle would have prevented it, and of course, it's not clear why they needed $5 million worth of military equipment to police this town of 13,000 that it's uh, apparently a war zone for this sheriff. Now, writing on the department's website, Sheriff Geyer notes that with the threat of homeland terrorism, rising violence in our schools, drug and alcohol abuse, our society and freedoms that we so dearly cherish are being challenged. Now, where have we heard that before? Our freedoms that we value and cherish, we hold them so dear, they're being challenged. So let's go ahead and turn the entire country into a militarized full-time prison. Um, but of course, now while they're sending all, you know, spending all these resources um, to police apparent drug abusers and drunk people, um, the borders themselves are wide open. The floodgates have opened, they're being overrun. Now, we received a, a letter from a, bo a Border Patrol agent who said that due to this flood of children across the borders, agents are too overwhelmed to stop the criminals that are crossing the border. The agent claims that as a Border Patrol agent, I can tell you as an eyewitness that we are currently losing more than we are catching. The ones we are losing are convicted felons, aliens from special interest countries, and other high-risk individuals. Now, furthermore, the agent says that under the direction of Immigration and Customs Enforcement, Im immigrants are being rounded up and released in largely Hispanic-populated South Texas towns, such as Brownsville and McAllen. And he says because fewer people will notice or care. And he says that this has been going on for months before stories broke out a couple of weeks ago. So, you know, perhaps that's why we're seeing all of this evidence of drug cartels being in Texas where they had mannequins hanging from billboards as a warning to either accept a bribe from the drug cartels or accept a bullet. Um, so that's, you know, just evidence that this is happening. We are seeing um, more violence heading to our streets. President Obama has just opened up a third military base to deal with the flood of illegal child immigrants and family units. Uh, senior administration officials who asked not to be identified told reporters that an army base at Fort Sill, Oklahoma, will initially hold 600 unaccompanied minors and eventually up to 1,200. Now, Reuters previously reported that the administration was seeking about $2 billion for the Department of Health and Human Services to handle this influx. Um, and this is, of course, more than double the $868 million that has been appropriated for this year. So they're wanting 
more than a billion dollars more for fiscal year 2015. Now, one week ago, the White House Director of Domestic Policy attributed the rapid run-up in illegal immigration by unaccompanied minors to growing violence in their countries, which is, of course, understandable, and that is why my heart, and I'm sure a lot of your hearts, go out to these children, go out to these families, because they are trying to escape a very corrupt and violent country and, you know, seeking a better, safer life for their families and their children here in America. But what about all of these criminals that are also crossing the border or 36,000 of them were released back into the country, um, you know, by the Department of Justice last year alone. So what about the gang related violence that is headed to our streets here in America? According to the FBI, there are now approximately 1.4 million gang members living in our cities and a substantial percentage of them are illegal immigrants. It's also been estimated that illegal immigrants now make up approximately 30% of the total prison population. And according to the Justice Department's National Drug Intelligence Center, Mexican drug cartels were actively operating in just 50 different U.S. cities in 2006, but that number had skyrocketed to nearly 1,300 by 2010. So of course that was four years ago. I'm sure it's even more now. And of course, in addition to all this increasing crime here in America, the cost to the taxpayer is going to be incalculable. But what did the White House think was going to happen when they're pushing so hard for amnesty and basically telling everyone, come on in and we'll take care of you? What did they think was going to happen? It's going to create a spike in illegal immigration. And you know, we've been warning about this for years. So now while people are, you know, politically observing, saying, is amnesty going to pass through Congress or not, Obama has already done de facto amnesty. Word has spread throughout, you know, Mexico, Central, South America. Um, that's why the borders are now being overrun. So what, is, what does this de facto amnesty look like? Well, we've got sanctuary cities. There is a federal government website that's set up that tells immigrants how to sign up for welfare, and it promises them that their um, immigration status will not be checked when they want to go get food stamps. Um, but listen to what Central Americans, people who are flooding the borders illegally, listen to what they're saying. Central Americans uh, say that news reports in their countries are encouraging them to make the journey north to the United States. A mother and child told Channel 5 News that the message being disseminated in their country is, go to America with your child. You won't be turned away. Now, this is, of course, in addition to the controversial Deferred Action for Childhood Arrivals program that uh, started in 2012. This allowed many illegal immigrants who came to the U.S. as minors to escape deportation for two years. The White House just gave them another two-year window last week. Now, of course, um, they're reporting that this has caused a 12-fold spike in illegal immigrant minors coming across the country. So forget about the fact that there's a lack of jobs. Forget about the fact that there are 57,000 veterans who are waiting for their first visit with a VA hospital. Forget about the fact that Veterans Affairs is in shambles. Forget about the fact that there are record numbers of American families now on food stamps and welfare. No, we don't need to take care of that. We'll just go ahead and spend our taxpayer dollars, $2 billion next year, to take care of illegal immigrants. And, you know, we've heard what a bureaucratic nightmare it is for legal immigration. So now they're just creating this backdoor, telling everyone to just come in illegally. It's a lot easier, and we'll just grant you amnesty. And basically, the question is, what is this for? Is it to turn America into an actual war zone so that we can justify the need for the militarization of the police? Um, is it to invite people in who will vote to take away the guns and who will vote for bigger government to take care of them? It's quite obvious what is happening here. Now stick around because coming up we've got a very important interview that will basically break down how to break free of this matrix and wake up. And before that we've got a special report from Staff Sergeant Joe Biggs tallying up Obama's lies. That's coming up right after this.